All right, this is a 2010 Ford Fusion. Today we're going to change the clock spring on this. Uh, you may recognize, I've had other videos on this Fusion. This one I put an electric rack in about a week ago. Uh, it was in an accident and it completely snapped the rack. So we had to replace the electric rack on. I have a video on that if you're looking for uh, how to replace electric rack, rack and pinion on fu Fusions this generation. Anyway, when that happened, uh, he lost steering in both wheels. And his steering wheel spun around several times. And when that happens, that'll break your clock spring inside your uh, steering wheel. And then you don't have, like, your horn, your airbag, all your controls will be broken. They won't work. Sometimes, uh, you know, if you're not in an accident, you're just driving. And your airbag light comes on or, like, your radio controls don't work or the horn doesn't work. But maybe something else works on the steering wheel. It could still be the clock spring. It just means that it's rubbed. Maybe that wire or two that's not working uh, wrong. This one, the clock spring, I'm sure, is snapped because, like I said, it's the steering wheel uh, probably went several rotations uh, past where it was supposed to. And that's one of the things with the clock spring is uh, you don't want it to uh, turn too many turns because that will snap it and break it. So anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and replace it. This has the airbag in it, so... Uh, to be safe, you probably want to disconnect your battery on it and uh, before you take the airbag out. I like to pretend like I'm a bomb expert and I'm called in and uh, I'm trying to take the airbag out with the, with the battery hooked up and see how it goes. No, I'm just joking, but I do. Uh, it is kind of funny to think about that. But uh, anyway, with this, disconnect the battery first and then we'll go inside and uh, start taking the airbag out, which is the first step. And then... Uh, get down to the steering wheel and the clock spring and all that good stuff. All right, before we get too far, I'll kind of show you here. This is the light that stays on, your airbag light. Uh, and then none of your controls will work. This is your cruise over here and your radio controls. Now, like I said, if you haven't been in an accident and it hasn't been snapped completely or whatever, you may have, and there's no horn either, you may have some of this stuff and not all of it. And a lot of times what it is is a clock spring. I'm not even going to try to diagnose this as far as the wiring goes because I know that's what happened. Um, this steering wheel just spun freely. There was, the wheels weren't hooked up to it. The rack was completely busted on the inside. So there's no reason for me. I know that's what it is. And I'm not going to do any testing. Now if you have, maybe your cruise doesn't work but everything else works. And you might have some other issue uh, besides the clock spring. Um, you can't necessarily condemn the clock spring right away. And if your airbag light's on... It doesn't necessarily mean your clock speed is bad either. You might want to get that scanned or scan it yourself if you have a good tool and see where that leads you with it. There can be other reasons why the airbag light's on. So uh, with this one, we have all the symptoms. Nothing on this steering wheel works, so we know uh, right away. Plus, I know what happened to this one, so I know right away I'm not going to look at any kind of wiring or do any kind of diagnosis on this. I know that's what it is. So... Uh, First thing we'll do after I turn this back off and uh, take the bat disconnect the battery is we'll take this airbag out. There's two little I'll show you real quick. I still haven't really learned how to uh, film that well in a car because I'm so close to the steering wheel here. It seems like the videos aren't all that great. I don't know if I need to get like a different like a GoPro or anyway. There's a little hole you can see. I got an Allen wrench in there. There's a little tiny hole on the side of the steering wheel. You just take an Allen wrench or whatever you have, something small that'll fit in that hole, and you push down, and there's little tabs in there, and you just uh, push on those a little bit, and then the airbag will pull out, and then uh, you can remove it. So there's one on each side, obviously, that holds it in. So you're going to want to get, uh, you, can, you can do it one by one, or you can do just get two Allen keys and put them in both sides and pop it out. It's up to you. Uh, but it will pop out one by one if you only have one or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the key off, this set the battery, and then we'll pop this out. All right, so I went ahead and just put two in. Uh, so I got one key on that side and one key on that side. And you got to kind of feel around the hole a little bit and push it. And then once you push it, it'll kind of just pop out or you kind of pull on a little bit. And behind here, you're going to have a red and a yellow, which is kind of convenient. You know which way they go. So all you got to do is just unattach those and then this airbag will uh, completely disconnect from the steering column then you can start working on the steering column itself so let me go ahead and just attach these and then we'll move this out of the way all right i don't know how well my camera focuses uh on this it's not really a super high quality camera 
if you look on the top here there's two indentations well there's one indentation on each clip here just get a small pick or screwdriver whatever you have it's going to, have to be something pretty small and you just kind of get down in between uh, the indentation and the black part here and just pop it up and you know don't pop it up real hard just kind of pop it up till it uh, pops up and then it just pulls out so uh, oops so once you get uh, once you get this plastic popped up a little bit these are uh, flush when you when you first take the steering uh, or the airbag off and then uh, like I said there's a small like I said I don't know if this camera's picking up this isn't this camera is not real good with real close stuff, but uh, there's an indentation right here, and just get something in between there and pop it up. So now that that's up, uh, you have a few connectors here. These should just pop right off, and then uh, we have the nut in the middle, and then we'll probably have to get the steering wheel puller out and get the rest of that. But you have to take these wires loose because we're going to pull the steering wheel uh, away from here because the clock spring's underneath here. I can actually see the clock. There's a part of the clock spring right here. So the steering wheel has to come out. So let me get these connectors off. And uh, yeah, there's a big connector. There's a big connector right here. That's probably got to pop out. It's been a little bit since I've done one of these. But uh, we'll pull this one out. And then I think that's all we got to pull out. We don't have to mess with these over here. So you just pull this main one out. And uh, these are already loose. And then we'll pull this wheel out. And then this will just uh, slide through that hole here. So let me get this connector off, and then we'll take this nut off and get the start taking the steering wheel off. All right, on, all right, on this connector, it's going to be connected like this uh, away from you. And there's a tab here on the bottom right here. So all I did was get my pick under there and push that upward and then just pull this, and it pulls right out. So that's all you're going to have to take off wiring as far as the steering wheel goes. Uh, these wires go obviously to your radio control and your cruise controls and uh, they connect right here But there's no point you don't have to take these out because this all goes into your clock spring So uh, that's all you got to take out is this connector And then we're going to pull the steering wheel out and these will stay with the clock spring So we have to be a little bit careful with this when we pull it out so that it goes through this hole So let me get the nut here I'm going to get my steering wheel puller and get the uh, socket for this nut here And then we'll uh, take this off the steering wheel off and you will need probably a steering wheel puller. Sometimes you can pull these off with brute force, kind of jerk on them real hard and pull them off. I don't know uh, on these fusions if you can do that. I, I mean, I'll try it, but uh, usually you got to get a steering wheel puller. If you don't have one, you can rent one. Uh, at most auto parts stores, rent those, or you can just buy it. They're pretty, they're pretty reasonably priced. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get the socket and the puller, and we'll pick it back up. All right, so that center nut was 19 millimeter. I took that off. I hooked up, hooked up my uh, steering wheel uh, puller and uh, went ahead and already got this loose. Uh, it's already off. It doesn't take much. And like I said, as long as you have that connector off and have your uh, clock spring, your airbag wires loose, uh, it should come right off. So here's the clock spring right here. I'm going to... Uh, Uh, put this away get this out of the way and route this out and then uh, I forgot we may have to take this uh, steering wheel steering column cover off too I think it's three uh, Phillips to get to the bolts to hold the clock spring and I forgot about that so we'll do that real quick doesn't matter what order you do that in anyway it's probably actually easier to get to with the steering wheel off so um, I'm going to go ahead and take this off and get it out of the way and then uh, we'll get this uh, cover off of the steering column I think it's three Phillips screws that uh, hold it in and then we'll be down to the clock spring. Here's your clock spring right here. So anyway, I'm going to go do that and then we'll pick it back up. All right, so I went ahead and took this off. Uh, you have three screws on this. Um, you got two on the front here. One's underneath your tilt wheel lever. And there's one back here. They should be Phillips. One of mine is with Torx, but I think uh, someone had been in here at some point and replaced it with the wrong screw. Or lost a screw and replaced it. So now you're down to the clock spring here. Um, there should be, I think, two or three screws to hold this in. Maybe only two. And we have this connector here. You just get your pick behind the tab, push down on it, and that'll pull right out. So now we have is uh, that screw there. And I think just one more right there. So I believe there's only two. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out, let you know what size they are when I get it, and then uh, 
we'll pull this clock spring out. All right, so we got a T15 here. T15s here, one on the top, one on the bottom. And actually there's a piece of uh, piece of clock spring broken already. This is supposed to have uh, two tabs on it. One of them just fell off. So anyway, that's how it comes out. You got two uh, T15 screws. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get the new one and we'll set it in there and I'll show you how that's set up. Alright, so this is the new one set in there. I've already got the two uh, screws on it and tightened. You're going to see this little push pin here. Uh, this, this is what keeps the clock spring from spinning too much. It's kind of locked in right there. And that's what you want. You don't want this uh, clock spring to go too many turns one way or the other. So you leave this in there until we get the steering wheel back on there. And then we'll pull this off like a grenade pin. And uh, a lot of bomb references today. Grenade pin for this. We got the airbag, which is a bomb. But uh, anyway, uh, so we'll just put this cover back on. Steering column, it's three, the three screws. And then we're just going to pick this stuff up. Oh, you're going to, uh, don't forget to... Plug in your electrical connector, electrical connector, before you put your uh, little plastic shroud on here. So uh, plug that in, get your two screws in, get them tight, and then you're ready to put this uh, cover back on, and then we'll slide the steering wheel on. And you're just going to slide this stuff through that slot in the steering wheel, and then we're almost home free. All right, now that your steering column cover's on, we're just going to uh, pull these wires up and just carefully run the steering wheel down on there. You want to make sure it's straight. You want to make sure that uh, it lines up with these. You don't want to break these tabs off. And uh, it looks like someone, like maybe this is the uh, second time this has been done because, and they didn't put the steering wheel on perfectly because uh, you can see both tabs are broke off on this one. And a piece of it was laying at the bottom of the uh, steering column when I took it apart. So it looked like someone maybe jammed it on there wrong or something i don't think that would happen during the wreck um it had to happen during installation so anyway just run this through that hole in the steering wheel and line it up with your uh, shaft and, and these two tabs here do not pull this out yet i mean it wouldn't as long as it doesn't turn all the way you're fine but i leave it on until the very last until the steering wheel is on there so just run everything through the steering wheel push it down and then we'll start that nut all right so i got the steering wheel through i still got this uh pin the uh, pull thing in there and I got these through here you can see I got the uh, studs that come out of that those plastic studs that come out of the clock spring in through the steering wheel and it's on here and it's tight so what I'm going to do now is just put the nut on and start it and probably tor torque it down and then uh, we'll have to plug in this connector here and pull the pin and then we're ready to put the airbag in so I'm going to go ahead and put this nut on and tighten it down uh, I don't know the torque spec on it it's just get it nice and tight don't go crazy on it but just make sure it's tight and then uh we'll plug this plug in and put this put the uh airbag back in and test everything all right so i torqued this center nut down pretty tight pulled that uh plastic retainer pin out plugged in my uh connector right here remember the tab goes downward so you kind of flip it upside down we went ahead uh red red yellow yellow on this and once you snap them in just push down these tabs and that's what locks them in. And then, uh, hold on a second, I gotta do, use two hands. It's, but you just gotta push these tabs down. Hold on one second. All right, so you can see here the tabs are pushed down. So all you have to do now is just uh, flip this over and just push in on it. And you can see there the horn works. The horn wasn't working before. But uh, if you got your, uh, take out your island's keys or whatever you use to clip these out, pull those out. And then once uh, those are out, just flip this over and push it in. It snaps in. Now this is in there. And you can see that uh, the horn works. And we'll start up and see if the airbag light goes off. Which I'm sure it will. Here's the airbag light. You can see that went off. That was on before. Uh, the cruise wasn't working, which I'm sure we'll have to move in to test that. Um, the bat, the Radio controls weren't working. Hey, Let's see. I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably... There's a volume down. You can see that works. So all the controls work. 
I'm sure the cruise works. I hit the on button, nothing comes on. But uh, that's probably because we have to be rolling. So, uh, anyway, that about does it. That about does it for a Ford Fusion clock spree. It's not a real complicated job. You will need a steering wheel puller. And just be careful with the tab. Don't pull that out. Now, I have actually gotten <laughs> a clock spring from or a clock spring from the auto parts store, and that tab was missing. And uh, you don't want that. If it does, check it before you leave there. Make sure the tab is in there. When I'm talking about tab, I'm talking about this thing. Uh, if this thing is out of there, that means that someone might have brought it back or something. I don't know. But uh, if this thing's out of there, your clock spring's probably no good. So make sure jet that's in there. I know it sounds stupid, but I've actually got one recently where this was gone. And I didn't even try to install it because uh, my guess is it was returned. So I think that's it for a Fusion clock spring. Uh, most clock springs are pretty similar. Um, but this one covers the 2010 Ford Fusion. Thanks for watching. And as always, God bless.